Before we get started, I know uh, one of the speakers earlier asked this question, but how many employers are in the, in the room? Raise your hand, please. We've got quite a few. Okay. Now this question is to all of you, even, even to the iron workers uh, that are not employers. How many people do not realize that the iron workers have a rigging and signal person certification? Raise your hand. It's kind of hard to see. Okay. Yeah, not so many. Well, after consulting with the IEC board and, and our certification director, who I'm going to introduce to the board here in a minute, nobody is really knocking down our door for the certification, but it's important that we went down this road. And if you just bear with me for a few minutes and a couple of slides, I'll kind of tell you why we went down this in the first place. Um, it was probably 2009, 2010, when I was the Pacific Northwest Administrative Coordinator, sitting in meetings with the trustees and hearing about the NCCO certification that our uh, members in the Northwest had to attain. And after discussing with a couple other coordinators that I met around the country, we're, we're all kind of irritated that this certification was coming across us when it wasn't required by OSHA. OSHA does not require riggers and signal person to be certified. They just got to be qualified. So, you know, fast forward a couple years, I relocate to DC to accept the director of apprenticeships position. And I get a, maybe a call a year or two calls a year regarding certain areas of country that, hey, what are, you, what are the iron workers doing about having a rigor and signal person certification? Well, we haven't done anything. Our qualified program, which I'm going to talk about in detail, is still the bread and butter of our rigging program. But we went toward the certification for a couple of reasons. We've had a couple of changes since 2016 when we had our Ironworker International Certification Board. And they included uh, retired Vice President Marvin Ragsdale and retired Certification Director Rush Kashwin. But we've got our, most of our committee members here and I want them to stand so I can uh, introduce them. And if you have any questions, grab us today, grab us tonight, or contact us in the future. So please would... Uh, Pete Hayes, he's the secretary of the program from Red Cedar Steel. Pete is out there, hopefully somewhere. Kendall Martin, Mid-Atlantic States District Council President and Vice President. Kendall, is here. Jason Corder from the National Training Fund. Our own Bill Brown, co-chair from Ideal Contracting. And then uh, Matt Lannan from Bard Hart and Crane and Riggin. He is not here, but he's part of the, the board. And, our public member, which we're required to have, Jerry Rosinski from the University of North Texas, is not here also. And I know some of you are going to ask, why do you got to have a public member on this board? And basically, the public member is responsible for ensuring that the general public is represented. And it keeps the board from uh, any self-serving interest. And Jerry does a great job, and he's very familiar with the iron workers. So if you have any questions from any of us regarding this program, contact me or the people standing today or I have some more contact information at the end of the slide how to get a hold of us. Thank you guys, appreciate it. So, why we did it? Let me go back a slide here. The iron workers have had a qualified Ruger and signal person program for years where certification and training and record keeping were key parts of the program. Hang on a second. And, uh, when I was an apprentice in the 80s, I mean, we went through this great qualified program. We, we did everything that was, need, that was needed. Our members are continually teaching this program, the 80 hours of rigging and crane training, et cetera. But we hope the certification program that we initiated, probably started talking about in 2014, will not only meet but exceed other third-party certifications where required in certain areas. Our team thoroughly investigated our competitors' programs to build what we think is the ultimate standard in the rigging industry, but we need your feedback to let us know if this is what you need or not. Our quality, excuse me, the um, picture up here, why the iron worker certifications are better. On the screen is the actual card a successful applicant receives. 
It's got his ID on the front of the card and the QR code and the NCA uh, logo on the back. And that QR code, for those of you who are not familiar with it, you can scan this code and get the member certifications right there on there. In 2016, we contacted the NCCA, which is the National Commission for Certifying Agencies, to assist us in constructing a program for certifying riggers and signal persons. With their guidance, our subject matter experts created the questionnaires, which aided in the selection of knowledge areas to be tested. Once the knowledge areas were determined and the topics selected, our subject matter experts, with the help of the NCA professionals, wrote the test questions, which make up the background of the certification requirements. So we didn't attain this accreditation on ourselves. We didn't make this up. We hired uh, professional outfits to assist us through this accreditation process. So I think maybe we only have 100 or so members certified in this certification. It is assisting our members throughout the country that require it. But I need to hear from you owners, you end users, if you need a certification and you're requiring the NCCO, please look at us because we have a comparison chart for you to decide. I'm going to tell you we're the best, but if you look at the side-by-side -side comparison, I want you to choose for yourself that if you're going to require a certification, you're going to come to the Ironworkers. So the requirements for the certification to be eligible, you must be a member of the Ironworkers in good standing. You must comply with the IACB substance abuse policy. You must have 6,000 hours of industry-related experience. And I'm going to come back to that one in a second. You must have completed and passed the Iron Workers Rigging Crane course or equivalent. You must sign the confidentiality policy and examination rules. Then you must pass a written and practical exam. So, so throughout our research, when we built this program, we looked at our competitors' certification and, and what they required, because we want apples to apples comparison, but we want you to decide, our employers out there, who do you want doing the rigging on your job with what certification? And we have found out, and our certification director, Brian Tannehill, he can attest every day, there's nothing out there on other third part of vacations that require anybody to have any hours of experience. So we got a little bit more backbone with our program. Our qualified program right now requires our members or apprentices to complete the 80 hours of rigging and crane program and have 700 hours of industry-related experience. And an, an apprentice can attain that in his third or fourth year. But in order to get that 6,000 hours of related experience, you've got to work in the field for quite a while. And you must have that qualified certificate before you're even eligible for the iron worker certification. So you owners out there, you end users, the employers, take a look at that industry-related experience, 6,000 hours. Go look at some of the other third-party certifications. Must be minimum 18 years of age. And I believe there's even one program out there. If you're under 18, you can take a certification exam if your parents sign off on it. So what, what, what do you want on your job site? You want hardworking, intelligent iron workers with experience doing the rigging, which we do day in and day out on the projects. So we're still a little confused. Well, I'm not confused. There are some certain areas of the country that require only the NCCO certification. And my team and I will do whatever we can, we'll travel anywhere, to meet with the owners, the end users, to try and compare and sell the ironworker certification to you. A lot of the certification, one of the reasons we went down to this certification area is that uh, there's a cost to other third-party certifications. And sometimes these uh, third-party certifications weren't portable from job to job. And our brother and sister ironworkers were having to pay this out of their own pocket or out of their employer pocket if it was required to get the certification. So we became accredited last, uh, last year. We have all the right stamps from the appropriate accreditation materials on the card, what you saw earlier. And we're trying to figure out if you're going to have a certification, why can't it be us? 
You know, our, our training materials, we take for granted, the iron workers take for granted what we have, but I know you contractors, and maybe even some of our members, don't realize that we have our own subject matter experts, iron workers, that come together as needed to update our 27 other construction uh, manuals, instructor guides, reference materials, and student workbooks, and update constantly what we're doing. And we do have the best training, and we do require 80 hours of minimum training in rigging and cranes, and like I said, 700 hours of field experience to get the qualified program. And that's, that's a prerequisite before you get the certified program for the IACB. Some of the topics, it's a very comprehensive exam, and we hired a, a professional company, Nocti, to assist us through this process of, of exam topics and the test questions and exam rules and regulations. And you see some of the topics up there on, on the screen. Codes and regulations, crane setup and load charge, rigging components, voice and hand signals, rigging inspection, lifting procedures, hitches, and rigging safety. Again, all the other third parties are doing the same thing. There's a lot of, and I'll use, I sat on a, a CII, Construction Institute, um, a task force a few years ago and uh, I was the only union member on this board and a lot of open shop people and the, I'll tell you what the, the non-union have they have great training materials but what they what they're lacking in my experience is a training program we have an instructor training program for 38 years that we teach our iron workers to become instructors and to teach our rigging to our members, apprentices and journey level workers. We're not teaching them how to pass the test, we're teaching them how to be a competent rigger and signal person. And this certification test ties everything together. And hopefully, they're doing you a hell of a job and you'll keep them employed. And if you want rigging done, you're gonna contact the iron workers. Now, I love this one. Take a look at this slide. Industry recognized quality. The NCCO recognized our rigging manual as a study resource for their certification test. I remember 2012, 2013, I'd get one, maybe two email a year from non-members requesting our materials, and I'm going, what the heck is going on here? How do they hear about us? Oh, you know, our training materials, they're no secret. Maybe a member gets the the manuals and then maybe they leave the program or they sell them, I don't know, they're all over the place. It's not a trade secret. Our training program separates us from other, our competition. But for them to list us as a study guide, what a better pat on the back to our program than this right here. I love it. And then finally, why are we, why is this certification why us? Why pick the iron workers? Well, we're one of the most comprehensive and rigorous rigging and signal certification program available. It's no gimme. We don't have 100% uh, passing rate. We've got about, I think it's around 83% pass rate, and that's not even for the first time. Sometimes that we have, we've got built into the program that if they miss it, uh, they fail a part of the exam, they can take it right away without a study guide and uh, they'll pass it. But the first time they pass it, it's probably even lower than, uh, probably 60%. But we probably got overall 83% pass rate. We do have a lot of failures. And I actually had one employer who requires his members to have the NCO certification. He went and sent a couple of his key personnel <laughs> to take our exam, and, and they failed it. And uh, like I said, it's no gimme. We take this serious, we know you take it serious. We're gonna do what it takes to train and educate our members, become the best iron workers out there, the best riggers and signalmen. But we want you to know that, and we want you to contact us if that's a requirement for your job. So I introduce you to the board members that are here. If they're sitting next to you, grab their card, talk to them at the break session this afternoon at 3.30 to 5, the networking session. I've got my uh, immediate contact information, that 4889 extension, well, 202-383, because I don't want you talking to uh, 
maybe a lady at the office and get transferred 15 times. I want you, if you've got a question regarding this program, call that number right there or email me or email or talk to the, the person out there regarding this program. Kevin Hilton and Impact and Kenny Waugh. Who doesn't love Kenny Waugh? We got this tri-folder right here. Take it home with you. And we still have plenty out there, Kevin. We got boxes of these if we need them. Take a handful, take as many as you want. I'll get you more, I'll send them to you. Also on page 25 of the uh, Impact Annual Report, describes a little bit more in detail what the tri-folder does not. So you got some information in front of you. You got some decisions to make out there, you owners and contractors. What sort of rigor and signal person you want on your job? I'll do whatever it takes, as I know the rest of the IECB board members, they'll do anything, travel anywhere to talk you into this. So please, if you have any questions, get a hold of me today, get a hold of the rest of the board members, and thank you for your time.